The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. On this episode of the Canola School, we're talking about sulfur rescue treatments with Marla Rickman, soil management specialist and interim soil fertility specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. We're at uh, the Farmer Day here at Manitoba Crop Diagnostic School in Carmen. And uh, Marla, when it comes to soil re- or sulfur rescue treatments in, in canola, what type of situation might lead to this being necessary? Well, we're talking about it here this year because of the fact that we've had a lot of rain in so many areas of the province. Um, we're, you know, 200% in normal in a lot of areas of the province. And especially if we're dealing with sandier soils or lighter soils that have the ability for water to move through them a little easier, we're seeing more of that sulfur um, leaching happening or sulfate leaching. And so in those cases, we might be in a condition condition where if that sulfate has kind of moved away enough from the root zone that we're starting to see a need for maybe some rescue treatments um, in some cases. Okay. What does that look like in terms of diagnosing this in the in the plant? Well, uh, so sulfur deficiencies are going to be seen in the newer, younger growth. And that deficiency in canola specifically is going to happen as kind of a cupping of the leaf. So the, the leaf margins will turn upwards. Um, and when sometimes there's a bit of purpling that will show up. Um, and in bad situations, occasionally that leaf will actually kind of clasp upwards towards the stem and so when we see those types of situations we know that we're looking at some kind of deficiency likely again sulfur again in that newer growth and because um, sulfur doesn't move through the plant it can't move from old growth into the new growth when we see those deficiencies we know that we need to do something about it because if that that canola isn't going to find more sulfur then it's a matter of making sure that that sulfur is there so that we can actually get some yield set. Okay. So like you said, the canola can't actually pull the sulfur out of its old growth. It it needs to keep pulling it up from the ground. What happens if it does run out, if it taps out at some point? Well, so earlier on in the growing season, if we end up seeing sulfur deficiencies, sometimes it's a matter of the crop just hasn't actually rooted deep enough to find some of that subsoil sulfate that is likely down in that soil. Again, sulfate is one of these natural occurring salts in our soils. We tend to have a lot of it in our Manitoba soils, maybe less so in our sandy soils that have more of that prone to leaching. So if you have an early season deficiency showing up, sometimes you want to just step back, wait a week, come back, reassess, um, see if it's grown out of it once those roots have gone down. If it's later in the growing season, it's a bit different because now those roots have already kind of explored that deeper depth. It's not tapping into sulfate. And now if we run out, now we have that potential. If you start seeing the, in a flowering crop like this, paler yellow uh, flowers is telling you now you've probably got some kind of deficiency going on. We might be able to do a bit of a rescue. Um, it's not gonna get us to full yield really full yield potential for sulfur comes generally speaking when we're putting enough sulfur down at time of seeding but if we're dealing again with these types of adverse wind uh, weather conditions and having this type of rain if some of that sulfate has leached too quickly then that rescue might be the only option we've got okay what's the relationship between nitrogen and sulfur in canola so Nitrogen is one of those things where, again, we always want to look at having, we often fertilize based on a ratio, so a 7 or 8 to 1 ratio of nitrogen to sulfur. Again, because we recognize the importance of sulfur in canola, um, and as we're ratcheting up, say, higher nitrogen rates in that that canola, we might be wanting to put up some sulfur too. The issue that can occur if we're using good nitrogen fertility, but not having adequate sulfur availability, you can actually have a very big lush growth, lots of leaf material, lots of biomass, crop looks fantastic. It uses up sulfur as it's growing, and then all of a sudden that reserve is gone, and now it's trying to set seed, and it's lost all that sulfur. So you can have huge, beautiful crops that end up with very little yield in those cases. So that's why we always talk about that N to S ratio, making sure that when we're you know, ratcheting up that, or bringing that nitrogen, that we're bringing sulfur along with it so that we've got enough to actually get that full yield potential. Okay. After a few years of drought, could residual N potentially be contributing to that scenario? Possibly. Um, it's, it's a good thing always to be soil testing and looking that. Um, so And keeping an eye on where those nitrate levels are so that we're not maybe throwing more nitrogen at the crop and then it's maybe just a waste of nitrogen as well. But yeah, it's always good to be soil testing to kind of know where we're at for that. And also at the same time, then looking at that sulfate test. So we have an idea again of how much there is. 
because sulfur is so variable across the landscape, the one rule of thumb again with sulfur is that we don't always trust the sulfate test. And it has nothing to do with the analysis of sulfate at the lab. It's because the landscape variability is so great. So what ends up happening is, you know, if you have a soil test that says you're very high in sulfur, well, maybe if you accidentally took a sample in a saline area that has you know, 10,000 pounds of sulfate per acre in that one spot, it throws off the analysis if you mix that in with other things. Um, if you're in a situation where you have low or moderate sulfate in your soil test, you can trust that you've got low or moderate sulfate because there's nothing that kind of threw that off. So when you're looking at sulfur on that soil test and you're growing canola and you look at, you know, a soil test and what the lab is recommending, they're not gonna look at whether or not you've got, lo you know, low, moderate, high amounts they're gonna tell you to put sulfur down because they also recognize how critical it is considering how variable it is in the landscape. All right. Finally then, Marla, when it comes to actually carrying out a, a rescue treatment, if you feel it is necessary, what does that look like? So if you're going in with a rescue treatment, uh, you know, if it's 10 pounds, something like that of actual 10, 20, 20 is the max that the plant would be taking up anyway, really, and removing. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. If you're going in with granular, you know, broadcasting that in. If you have to go in with liquid, dribbling that in to limit the leaf contact is the the recommended practice. Um, if you're dribbling it in to, in order to decrease the potential for leaf burn, you want to make sure that you're going on wet leaves. And so if you're going in after heavy dew or after rain, something that helps to kind of wash that uh, liquid sulfur off, that can kind of help to, you know, shed off and not uh, cause quite as much leaf burn. The leaf burn has the potential to limit yield, but it's not going to limit the yield nearly as bad as that sulfur deficiency is going to. Okay. What about timing in terms of when you carry out that recipe? So always when it comes to sulfur, again, earlier is better because you have a better chance of actually getting that growth you know, keeping that plant going and, and getting things into that to, to seed set. So you can go as late as, you know, bolting, early flowering. Um, the potential for the benefit of it gets less and less at that point in time. So the earlier is better. Uh, but again, it's better sometimes to do something than nothing at all, uh, especially again, if you're getting to a point where that crop is really just tapped out of sulfur and can't access anymore. All right. Thanks for your time and your expertise again today, Marla. No problem.